I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and today I'm going to show you how to engrave custom flasks. This week, a client of mine dropped off about 94 of these flasks, along with some mugs. And because I haven't shown flasks before, I decided to make a video about how I go about setting up and engraving for these items. First off, let's jump into the design and I will show you how to set up the file for the flask as well as the jig for the machine. The first thing that I did was find out where my client bought the items from. In this case, he bought them from JDS. So I went to their website to find a product template. I will put this link in the description below that goes straight to this product template so you don't have to hunt around for it. I'm going to go to gifts and engravables then you need to know your product number. In my case, because it's a flask, the number is FSK, and I already know that it is 502. You can find this on their website if you happen to be buying from them. Johnson Plastics also has templates for some of their products. Just look for them in the how-to or the specification area of the item. So I'm gonna click it to download it, then I'm going to go over to Illustrator and open it up. Here's what the file originally looks like. It's basically just the outline of the flask with the top notch for the lid. So what I ended up doing was taking this, copying it, and I, you can see that I've already started to modify one, but I brought it into here and pasted it in place. For this template, this inner rectangle is for the artwork layout. I actually went slightly beyond this because the client had a previous version to work off of, but you can't use this as your boundary for your artwork. And then you'll see that I took away the line in the middle up top. You can do this by simply release the compound path, extend the top rectangle past the larger one at the bottom, make sure they overlap. And what I'm gonna do is actually fill both of them in by changing the stroke to a fill. And then over here on the right, I'm going to go to Pathfinder and choose the Unite tool. This will make them into one. Then I'll just outline it again. And this is the easy way to get a single border line with no cutting involved. And this is basically how I got to this shape over on the left. One thing that this template does not have is the little piece of metal that connects the lid to the rest of the flask. I want to use this design outline as my template on the laser for engraving. So what I'm going to do is add another rectangle that's slightly inside of both of those, roughly about there. Again, I'm going to fill both in. So I'm going to make them both filled. I'm going to get rid of the stroke on both and the same thing, hit Unite, outline it. And now when I change to black, you'll see when I put the stroke back, you'll see it now has a step for that metal piece. Just make sure that it does not exceed the height of the flask or the left hand width of the flask. And this should allow for that piece to fit inside. You may need to move it to the left or right, depending on how far that piece sticks out. If you want to center your artwork on the original rectangular shape, what you can do is simply draw a rectangle, highlight your logo and that rectangle together by holding down the shift key and clicking both of them. And then over on the right under align, you can horizontal align center and you can also vertical align center and then it will move it up so it's centered on the actual rectangular part of the flask. And when you're done, simply delete out that extra rectangle you had and you'll be good to go. When I go over to the laser, I'm going to use this exterior path and cut it out of MDF so that I can use it as an alignment template. And then I will place the flask inside of that so I get centered engraving every time. So let's go check it out on the laser. So this is my jig for the machine. As you can see, I have a cutout in the top corner that was not in the original design that I downloaded. This is to allow for space for this metal piece to slide into place. 
If I don't allow for that cutout, this will interfere. It doesn't really matter how large you make this, just make sure there's an indentation so that the edge of your flask has a shelf to rest on. Once you have this jig made, you can set up multiples. I just set up this single one for the video. You just take the flask, slide it into place, make sure it's up against the top left corner, and then it's ready to engrave. One of the key items to this is the focus on the flask. As you can see, the surface has a curvature to it, but it cannot be put onto a rotary or anything like that. So you need to make sure to account for this curvature when you are setting up the focus. If you bring it up to focus in the middle to where this is focused and it's nice and centered, if I move it over to the left, you will see that now it's not even touching. What I like to do is actually focus to this spot on the outermost side of the engraving to make sure that the beam will hit that area. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the bed up until that hits. And now this is focused. Keep in mind that as you do this, the center will be slightly out of focus, but this will ensure that the machine will get through the powder coating layer over on the edge. If you're only focused to the center, chances are you won't get through the powder coating over on the left or the right. Now that the jig's set up and the flask is in the machine, let me show you how it engraves. Once it comes off the laser, this is what the flask looks like. It has a bunch of residue on it from the coating. So what I like to do is take a cleaner. This one is called LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner. Uh, you can actually get this at Dollar General for a dollar. So super cheap and works really well. So what I'm gonna do is just spray a little bit on the flask and then just rub it clean with a shop towel and it will get rid of all the residue and help it to be nice and shiny. That's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you saw, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below which color flask you liked the best, and be sure to check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share projects like this along the way. I wanna thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. So you just take your flask, slide it in the...